gosh welcome back welcome back everybody thanks for clicking on the video welcome to rodeo ranch Woo! oh my gosh so what's happening this week piper doug well, this is tuesday thank you for uh, watching last week's video thank you for any new subscribers and wow so as you will all of you will be quite astute will realize this lady is not sticking around she's a lever she was supposed to leave last year she actually uh, miscarried uh, we think we were never quite sure but we found a fetus in the bedding through the through winter and she never calved um, and we're pretty sure she did not calve out in the pasture because the two calves that we found in the summer uh, they had mothers accounted for so she got through another year she's not sticking around as you can tell by her quarters it's going to be a bit of a fight so she is hyper hyper defensive now she didn't try to climb in the bucket with me but she was quite uh, adamant that I'd leave her baby alone but I can try and do this calf right there right there yeah Ed Gosling was just talking about that where babe where cows will push calves out right by water yeah she just did that I was inside having a cup of tea three o'clock break having a bit of toast check the cameras I knew she was getting close to calving but she was over here no, she went over here, did the job. So I got my gear back on, get out of here as quick as I could. And at that point, the cab was starting to uh, get ready to be mobile. So I had to switch the bucket onto here because I know I couldn't catch, grab the cab by her. She is not one of those at the Shire cows. Like I said, she's leaving. So, yep. Parked the tractor in, put the bucket down, rolled the bucket back, climbed up over the back of the bucket, grabbed the baby by the legs while mum was getting all like, what are you doing? I pulled the cab up into the bucket and drove over here and there they are. So she's gonna take a little bit of settling down. But anyway, there we go. Oh my gosh, 82. That's our 82nd one. So, thanks for joining us and uh, buckle up. Numbers might be next. Isn't that right, baby? That's the one on the left, by the way. The one with no uh, tags and half ears. Yeah. That's my go. Calm down. You calm down! Oh, happy May, everybody. May the 1st. It is uh, Wednesday. Yeah. If y'all want to know what a frost boil is, who are not from parts of the world where these happen. That's a frost boil. Notice there's no moisture anywhere else. Is that there? It just keeps coming up. And the rest of the ground around it will get spongy. So we literally could drill a hole there or dig a hole with a backhoe and it would just keep filling with water. And yes, we probably could drill a well there but ironically it's right in the middle of a corner hi queenie hi sweet girl hey sweet darling this is another one of the one of the favorites hey sweet darling yeah we're waiting for you to have a baby hopefully you're earlier this year because you had your baby out in the field last year okay so Bit of sad news. Uh, I think one of the starting clip of the video, I was <coughs> quite uh, uh, worked up or, oh, pardon me, I'm snipping, or uh, energized or however you call it, adrenalized by this mum. You can see her up at the back there. Had her baby right next to the Clarty water. And we had to save it. I'm gonna get these guys a bull, a uh, bale, 
to the bulls. Blah, 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 blah. Paper Doug can't talk. Why does Paper Doug not be able to talk? Hey, Screechy Cheeks. Well, the reason Paper Doug can't talk is because she killed her cab. Yep. And a lot of people who don't uh, deal with cows won't get this. Why, how, any of the above questions. Um, I'm not gonna show you it. See, she's talking to it. So, baby was pinging around here. Baby was trying to figure out how to get onto her because she's got a very odd shaped bag. Baby was very energetic, nothing wrong with it. Came back out here yesterday, later in the day with the boss lady and Liam. And from what I can look at the baby, she had stepped on it and broke its back into the bedding. And then the cat must have made a noise and she turned around and stomped its head into the bedding too. And no, she wasn't fighting with anybody else because the entire herd were down here at the bale feeder the whole time. So it's all on her. She did it. So she was going to be going to the retirement pen to leave after weaning at the end of the year. Well, she gets an early ticket. She gets to go to the holiday place all by herself. That's right, Stumpers. You're going nowhere, because you're my girl. Yeah, you are. Stumpers has made your clothes close, I mean. Aren't you, darling? Where's that baby? There it is. Oh, we're doing somersaults today, boy. So we got a couple more in here that are getting right close and ready, so I can't wait for you to get because you gotta go out and see your daughter again. Yeah. See so yeah, that's kinda crappy. We're back to minus one on our record, so I never know. You might still have a, a twin or twee still to come. Hey sweetie. Yeah. Oh, you're just such a lover. So yeah, not good. But as all the ranchers and the what's in the video will go, it happens. It happens. Normally this is the stuff you have to deal with when you have them in close quarters. Like if you're in a pen or a barn, you have to watch out for mums laying on the babies or whatever, but I don't get it. Like I said, she had the whole top end of the field to her uh, field pen corral even to herself all the room in the world nope the hard are doing great babies all seem to be healthy for the most part um so just keep an eye on them make sure they're not not going to uh wander off so anyway bring you back for the next project Well, I can tell you one thing. You can tell this to uh, people who are not cattle folk. If you were in it for the money, you would look at this and go, so right now with the state of the droughts, that's a hundred dollars. So there's got to be Upwards of about $20,000 right there. Yeah, give or take, there's about $20,000 right there. And that's one of the piles. There was a pile over there that's been recycled. And there was a pile over there that's been recycled. So yeah, when you look at it like that, that's a $100 bill. Yeah. 
and uh, all of the stress that goes with all of this stuff and the cost and the time you gotta love what you do yeah anyway let's go feed them Hey Chewy! Come on, Harley. Come on, sweetie. Hey Maggie. Echo! Come on, we babies! Hey, Squint. Your mummies went that way. Come on, boys. There we go. First timers are right on the grass. Uh, yes, I know only half of them are calves, but we're talking a little bit of wet weather coming, and I'd far rather have them out on grass. They've got a bale over there by the pile, pile to climb on. What am I doing? It's an old uh, fuel tank stand I had gathered up when we were cleaning up. Uh, I'll let this down a bit. Um, well, there's a lot of good angle iron in it. So I was down dropping off the uh, baby that uh, the mum killed at the recycling and uh, I'm going to bring this back so I can get it cut up and put the metal into my uh, my scrap metal bin and uh, kill the two birds with one stone as they say. Yeah. Babies. Well, we are starting to dry up again. 
So yeah, we got just over one and a half inches of rain out of that lot. So yeah, that's us at over three and a half inches of rain so far this spring, which is almost as much as we got the whole growing season last year. So we won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Kind of see on the horizon, things are starting to green up pretty good. So, for the most part, calves health doing really good like they're in the high 90 percent so is the odd one that has a little bit of uh, runny gray poop but it never takes them down like they're never to the point where i can catch them and that's usually when you know you should be medicating is when you can catch them isn't that right bowie yeah here comes suki hey sweet girl um our biggest problem is some of the young cows are feeding way too many calves. Like Luna here, when I came out just after lunch, she was feeding four calves. Now, her calf doesn't seem to be hurting for it, and she doesn't seem to be hurting for it, but really wish she wouldn't, but she'll learn. So yeah, we still currently have 21 of the old broads in this pan still to calf. We still have eight in the second timers pen to cab and there is I think there's still a bunch in the first timers to cab too we, won't, we only we know that there's at least three or four that are to cab so like I said we're already at where we were last year with the first timers so we won't argue too much in that anyway so yeah it's Sunday today uh, I was just refilling the dire tomatoes are of uh, getting all the drains and all the puddles drained and then the big thing is uh, when it's I've started getting at this new the fence that's to be moved oh crap the gates moving uh, the new fans have got the strainers in already and I want to start running the new straight wire so we can get the rest of the posts in but today is Liam's uh, Liam starts his job tomorrow his big getting into the grown-up world so yeah that's kind of cool starts going to work in Brandon so yeah everybody wish him luck do great uh, so yeah just kind of getting everything done here comes Mark and talk about what a turnaround getting that foot trim done getting that one foot that was quite badly twisted getting it back to being normal, she's just walking like a supermodel, aren't you, Mark? Yeah. She still hasn't quite forgiven me for putting her in a trailer, but she's getting over it. Anyway. Okay. I don't know. Might have to shed the jacket here. The temperature is climbing. Still single digits, so. I'll go and start uh, pulling barbed wire. Isn't that right, Mark? Nah, she doesn't care. Well, new week, happy Monday. Uh, so, me and the boss lady, Mrs. Piper Doug, are doing a run up to Show Lake to go and grab parts from three different dealerships. Um, as you saw, in, uh, I think it was a previous clip, I'm starting to do the uh, fence line at the top here, get it moved and make it impregnable and that way we can get that fence done and then start on the new fence down by these trees over here um so right now i'm moving these tires because we've still got silage to feed out here but we've been hoping to save the silage till as late as possible that way we're going to put garlic in the silage to try and ward off as much of the early uh, late spring flies and whatnot as possible so that's what we're doing but I was picking these tires up and I was I was realizing something these two tires that one there and then there's a couple of other ones I realized these are the tires that were on the first big four-wheel drive we had when we moved to Canada that was running the air seater it was an 8640 with an 8650 engine in it, short block. 
Um, yeah, so these are, they actually weren't in really bad condition, but there was a lot of stubble checking and cracking in them, but the treads were really good. Um, so yeah, we switched them out for nice big brand new meats. And then ironically, those radials over there were off of the uh, 8970 that we had that I was the one that ended up running with the triples on it. And those were the ones that we uh, changed out to run like a deep tread on it eventually. So yeah, that was our first air seater tractor tire. And that was our second tractor. It's early tires. So yeah, this is what you call up recycling or upcycling. I think that's what they call it. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm setting over here because this ridge here is really good for feeding silage on. It's high ground. It's fairly uh, solid. So even if you get the wettest of weather, it never gets really punched out bad. You can see over there by the corner with that three and a half inches of rain we've had, it's getting kind of punched out where the uh, creek feeder is. So I've started moving the bale feeders onto that platform that's basically made out of bedding and, and uh, scrape out that comes from the yard. So, there's only, uh, I figured it was about 20 days of silage left, round about, give or take. About three weeks of silage left in the bale yard. But that'll be enough for us to put enough uh, garlic and whatnot through them, just to just to give it a test. Because we want to get that silage used up because it's it's been piled for two years now, so it needs it needs used. So yeah, I'm gonna set these. I think there's seven tire feeders. There's I think six of these, and then there's that one combine tire. I'll set them along here, and we'll get going. Shocker. Raining again. Ugh. My gosh. So, me and the boss lady just back from Shoal Lake, as I said, going to pick up parts. So, yeah, we hit all three Steeler ships. Pop quiz. How do you blow through $7,000? Go to three dealerships. Does not take long. So I'm just checking everybody over. I'm gonna go and do some feed bales out. Yeah, nobody's doing nothing. Well, maybe while it's wet and cold, there's no big push, but anyway. So, yeah, one of the next scenes I will be doing the stuff that I picked up today in the workshop tonight. Because there's silage chopper parts, there is, I think, filters for the baler tractor, filters for the disc vine. We already dropped the pin and the parts off for the green tractor over at Jody's Welding. Um, Dennis was not in his happy place, I think he was dealing with a disgruntled pain in the bum customer. So I just dropped the stuff off with them and left. So yeah. I'll join you when I'm done getting soap. Oh, folks. Well, if you haven't been watching BCP Trucking to this point and you're watching my channel, you're missing out. They have a great channel over there. Brandon and Kathy. Uh, they were saying, well, Brandon was saying that they've had a lot of rain today and they are sort of in line with uh, us so they get we get what they've had so look at this yep so we probably had oh I think at this point in the last hour we've had over half an inch of rain just in the last just in the last hour to half an hour close the window because it's coming in the back side. So, what am I doing? Well, uh, apparently the rest of my 16 footer gates, and look at that. The rest of my 16 footer gates have showed up at the Verdon Co-op. They were nice enough not to call me to say they were in. I had to ask. 
Uh, the 10 footers are not in, but I want the 16 footers here because I've got, I want to start getting them hung. So I'm using this trailer to go and fetch the gates. My flat deck trailer is still currently in the yard with a bunch of stuff on it. So this is just as good. But also because I need to pick up some wall paneling for Mrs. Piper Doug for a project in the house. In the house! So I am bringing this up to where I can hook onto it tomorrow. And I don't have to take the dually down there. Because, just because of that. So I'll just park it on the road up here because nobody's going to be coming past our driveway anytime soon. So yeah. So yeah, this is great. We were all good for moisture because the corrals are an absolute mess. So to all you who are still begging for moisture at West, you might want to check your uh, your address because uh, it keeps getting sent here. And we're we're all good. We are we are good. We are we are all good. We don't need no more. I'll tell you what though, that that little broken ball hitch thing that I had rolling around in the workshop forever, welding it to this, man, that was one of the handiest things I ever did. Honest to gosh sure has helped moving things around and not just moving things around but hooking things on there. Anyway, I'm going to get this set up to the bale processor to haul bales around tomorrow before I head to town. And there's not much else I can do tonight. I can't even go fencing or anything. So. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I do the wrap up in the workshop tonight because I've got all that stuff to unbox that, I, that we picked up today at Show Lake. So uh, see you in a minute. I don't, you don't want to go out. Well, we were getting this ready and yeah we're probably another uh, probably close to two inches of rain again so we're fast approaching six inches of rain so far this spring so uh, mother nature is playing the old uh, catch-up game so yeah I'd never taken the deck off this since we got it a year ago so I figured I would take it off give it a clean out check it over sharpen the blades get it ready for the boss lady to go chopping so yeah i was gonna do the summation of uh our little trip up the road today so uh yeah it's uh you wouldn't think you were looking at that much money here um so first and foremost is this so this is $1,500. This is the charge pump for that orange tractor. So yeah, this is what provides the flow to the main pump. And this is what I've been told to start with. Because apparently they're thinking is if the main hydraulic pump is wore out, your charge pump will also need to be replaced. So might as well start with your charge pump, change it out. If we get full service after that, then we're good. But if this, if you put this in and it doesn't fix it, you're going after the hydraulic pump, but you'd be changing this anyway. So either way, you'll be changing this. 
And I've been told it's less than a two hour job to uh, install this because you can do it through a side panel in the rear transmission. It's in beside the wheel. You take a plate off, you drain all the oil out obviously. You take the uh, plate off, you pull the old pump out, you switch the, uh, the, uh, the pulley and uh, just reinstall with O-rings and all the rest of it and off you go. So, yeah. So we have a whole complement of filters here for Swather and for the baler tractor. So yeah, that's a, that was a lot. So here's the big one. Nine brand new blades for this old 880. And bolts, but that's not a huge deal. But you can see that's actually how much hard surface blade comes on these. And I had thought originally it was a 3 8 quarter inch hard face on it. No, it's an inch or thereabouts. So that tells you how badly worn these blades were and the fact that they were probably original to the chopper. And yes, they were $220 a piece and there is nine of them. So you can do the math. So, still leaves me the little project of getting that over to a metal shop and getting them to put new hard edges on it, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. The part that really, really got myself and the parts guy very confused was these. So, these gadgets. So according to when they first looked them up, I think I told you guys it was like 160 bucks each. Ended up they were down to $70 for each set when they ordered them. So it is what it is. Uh, I did not order brand new ones of these because I will be making these up either out of hardwood dowel or I'll find plastic rod and drill them because they wanted $40 each for these and there's eight i wasn't about to spend that on round bits of material with hole in it even if i have to make new ones every year i'm not paying 40 bucks for one of these sorry not sorry uh it looks like the only thing that they did not get me and i don't know whether they forgot it i didn't have time to check when i was up there so when I ordered the, the uh, hardware to put these on, I also wanted the captive nuts that clipped into the backside. But I can also just weld in some nuts myself. But yeah, like I said, here are the here's the rest of them. Like some of them, this like this one here is actually not that bad. You can see one side is worn out over the other side. Because they all seem to do this. They wear off one side, not the other. But, uh, so yeah. Not too worried about these, because like I said, we're not going to be doing much with the chopper this year. I'm very doubtful we'll be even looking at any kind of silage this year. Just trying to get everything else done. So, yeah. Pardon me. Nice little haul. Um, going to pick up the rest of my gates in Verdon tomorrow. Going to pick up a new chainsaw tomorrow because I want a bigger saw for getting all these trees like and the shelter belt that's out at the fence line. I want to get it cut down. This saw here I'm ordering parts for. That one's not far away from running. That one's a lost cause, but I might see if I can get parts for it. Chainsaws are not my thing, people. Sorry to say, never had much to do with chainsaws. I know engines, I know small engines, like these things. Chainsaws, weed eaters, don't have much experience on them, so. Um, and I went to the local Hasvarna shop, and you'll love this. I might have told you this already, so just fast forward over it if I have. I took that saw to the local Hasvarna place, and they said, what do you want us to do with it? I said, well, it needs a carb job, I'm pretty sure. 
just check over it, get it running for me. Are you sure? I was like, why? He said, well, how much money do you want to spend on it? I'm like, why? Well, our shop rate's $150 and a carb kit's 40. So you're gonna be $200 into this saw before you even know if it's gonna run properly. So yeah, I brought it home. Went on eBay. I can get the whole kit, fuel filter, new fuel line, an entire brand new carburetor, air filter, all that stuff delivered for $50. Yeah, that all delivered for $50. And even at that price, I get the new choke lever because the end that sits here is all broken off. So, uh, Steelerships, honest to gosh, that's why people don't go back to them anymore. That's why, you, that's why the, all these little towns that had these little repair shops, oh my gosh, where did they all go? Because man, oh man, they'd be busy now. Anyway, oh, this video is probably going on way too long. Like I said, we're wet, fencing, uh, hopefully gonna get that big orange four-wheel drive up and running. I took the battery out of it, put it on the charger, so it's charging up right now. Well, not right now, but it's charging up. So hopefully we're gonna get it fired up, get it moved up closer to the shop so I can get that leaking hydraulic pump figured out, sorted, or taken to somebody that can figure it out. Uh, yeah, so Mrs. Piper Dog is heading to the big city uh tomorrow and she figured she can slip by sms equipment in winnipeg and she will be able to get all my parts for this guy and she'll be home on wednesday so hopefully in the next video you're going to see me putting all of these spools back together and then putting the joysticks back in and getting this guy up and running so then like i said we can get it washed put back together yay oh I said only having one loader machine right now is nerve-wracking. And it was Liam's first day of work today, everybody. So went really well. He loves it. Got his own parking spot, all that good stuff. So it's been a good week, everybody. Oh, let's get at her. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking on the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up on the way out. And we'll hope to see you in the next week. Tidy bye, everybody.